my loves welcome back to a new reading vlog this reading vlog is going to be a fiend one this week i'm going to attempt to read five thrillers if you saw my wheel of tbr video for this month then you know that i have picked out a lot of horrors and thrillers and spooky atmospheric books and i'm so excited definitely a seasonal reader i say it's going to be a week it may go on a little bit longer than that but i do tend to read thrillers pretty quickly as opposed to like fantasy books so hopefully i can read all these in a week i have actually already started one of them i'll just quickly let you know what these well i'll quickly let you know what i know about these which isn't that much but the one i've started with and the one that I'm loving so much so far is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So this is a haunted house story, a story about a place called Bainbury Hall where our main character Maggie lived when she was little with her parents until they fled in the middle of the night and she doesn't remember why or what happened. However, her father went on to write a haunted house memoir about their time there and all the creepy things that were happening and the reasons for why they left. The book he wrote quickly became the most popular real account of a paranormal experience since amateurable horror. However, Maggie doesn't remember anything about her childhood. She is convinced that her parents were lying just so that they could get this book deal. But her father dies and she inherits Bainbury Hall and her job is renovating houses. So she wants to go back and try and uncover the truth of what actually happened because her mom still isn't telling her what's happened, well, what happened at Bainbury Hall. I'm around 100 pages in and she's there and creepy things are happening. It's great. I'm loving it so much because this actually includes one of my favorite tropes, which which is a book within a book. Not only do we have Maggie's perspective and what's happening now, we have the book that her father wrote as well. We are reading that simultaneously with the different chapters and it's incredible. I said in my TBR that people have said that it reminds them of the Netflix adaptation of The Haunting of Hill House. I'm definitely getting that vibe definitely a similar setup and this has had me gripped since the very beginning the book that he wrote that we are reading chapters from those have been my favorite parts so far definitely creepy we've learned about some of the past of the house i can't wait to learn more i feel like this is a book that's going to make me go back and forth between thinking okay paranormal stuff is actually happening or is it actually something less sinister? Or could be just as sinister, but not paranormal. I'm probably gonna go back and forth thinking that throughout this book, but I'm having the best time so far. So the other ones I'm also going to be reading this, well, in this vlog, <laughs> I know less about because I haven't started them yet. But firstly, we have My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is a very popular one, I believe. Uh, we follow a married couple, I think, and they have a very dark secret. I think it involves murder. I don't wanna know too much very very eager to try this one we also have a new one that i've just recently purchased which is the inheritance games by jennifer lynn barnes which i said in my tbr gives me knives out vibes and i love knives out so yes i'm totally down for this i think this one is ya following a young girl called avery who comes into a large fortune that's left to her by this extravagant millionaire and the family of this millionaire are not happy and she ends up at this house that she's inherited i think and there's some deadly games it says she's soon caught in a deadly game that everyone in this strange family is playing but just how far will they go to keep their fortune I can't wait to try this. I think it's going to be very fun. <laughs> I also have Harrow Lake by Kat Ellis, which is about a creepy town called Harrow Lake where a cult horror film was made. And we're following the daughter of the director who goes there and uncovers family secrets and things. Um, gives me night film vibes <laughs> for obvious reasons, but I'm very eager to try this one too. And then lastly, we have Lock Every Door again by Riley Sager. This one's about an apartment sitter and these apartments are very um, high profile private homes. And when she gets there, people start vanishing. I believe it has some kind of dark secrets, creepy past. Not sure, this is probably the one I know the least about, but I am loving this one so far. So I have high hopes for this. I also did enjoy Final Girls as well. So this will be like the second and third book I'm trying from this author. But yes, that is the plan for this week. Um, so I will be reading a lot more of this today. And also I think I'm going to start an audiobook for one of them. And the one I think I'm gonna to listen to will be my lovely wife. 
um, as I do want to take some um, bookstagram pictures today. It's actually getting a bit later into the afternoon now, so maybe left it a little bit too late. But I do have a little homeware haul, I guess, or like Halloween haul, because I have been wanting to go to the pound shop <laughs> for a while, because a few of you guys, actually a couple of you actually, um, told me to check out the pound shop for the books, because you found some like really good bargains there. Um, sadly, I didn't find any books, however, I got a few Halloween bits and bobs and um, some ridiculous things. <laughs> First thing being, this light up skull, I thought that was cute. I might keep this out all year round actually. <laughs> I also got a couple pom pom garlands, which are just the cutest thing. I don't know where I'm going to put them, they're going to have to be somewhere quite high so that the cats don't drag them down because yeah, the cats will just destroy these. <laughs> Couple other things I got from the pound shop. This isn't Halloween -y or anything, but I got this planter, which is cute. Also, this is this is my new plant. Meet Phyllis. <laughs> and I saw these and they're ridiculous and I needed them immediately. I don't feel like I need to explain myself. <laughs> I use this emoji far too much. I use both of these emojis far too much. But I thought they were stupid and I needed them and I don't know where they're gonna go. Probably on the shelf somewhere and probably not together <laughs> or anything. But I have actually um, just got some cheap shelves for the bedroom um, to go over my bed. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put one of these at least over my bed. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 yeah, I have, I have no explanation. <laughs> and then from Lidl, I got some mini pumpkins. So I got some regular ones, but they're so small and cute and I love them so much. And they also have the ghost pumpkins as well, like the white ones. So I got a bunch of these that are kind of scattered around the place. <laughs> also in Poundland, they have chocolate orange bars now. This is the thing now. This, I mean, I do kind of miss the, no, this is just easier. <laughs> but keep an eye out for these if you're a chocolate orange lover. Then the last thing I got was actually from Tesco's. The reason we were out today was because we had to do the weekly shop. But I saw this and I just think this is the perfect size mug for a cup of tea. It's pretty huge, but it's not uncomfortable to hold and it feels very autumnal to me. So I have a new mug and I'm very happy with my purchases. So there's a wee haul you didn't ask for, but I hope you enjoyed. Also, a couple of bookish things actually that recently arrived. First of all, I ordered my compendium for Believeathon, um, round three <laughs> Believeathon, the mystery of the missing Malathacarum. Why do my friends keep making readathons with words that I can't say? I'm pretty sure Ashley said that as well. But yes, I am so proud of Gavin for all of his hard work with this. It's absolutely incredible. I can't wait to participate. We have so many recommendations and things from authors in here. We have the map. All the books of the month are in the back as well. It's just amazing. He's got a website. I will link his announcement video if you haven't already seen that, which I hope you have. Incredible, incredible. Can't wait for November as well to uh, join in on Believeathon. And speaking of the lovely Gavin, he's just the sweetest. He he pre-ordered, I think, 10 copies of this to send to people. So honoured to be on the list, Gavin, even though I told you not to. Um, but this is Frost Hat 2, of course, Escape from Aurora by Jamie Littler. I am so excited for this, especially after, after watching the live show that Gavin had with Jamie Littler. I just, oh, I'm a little bit nervous though because people were saying that it hurts, like something bad happens or something, I don't know. But I absolutely love Frost Hat. It's one of my favorite middle grades ever. Cannot wait for the sequel. I'll definitely be reading this one next month. So thank you so much to Gavin for that one. And also the Waterstones editions have these beautiful sprayed edge, well, yeah, stenciled sprayed edges. And the illustrations in these books like are all done by Jamie Littler as well. And they're incredible. And I shouldn't be looking really because spoilers, but yes, I have that too. And then also <laughs> my fairy loot editions of the David Bad trilogy arrived. So well, we have City of Brass with the stenciled edges, uh, which I have read and loved. It was what a pick for Regret Review and we all loved it. And then we also have the Kingdom of Copper with the green and we have the Empire of Gold with the purple, which I think is my favorite color way. <laughs> but these all come signed on the end papers and each one has a different design under the dust jacket. So this is the first one. This is the one for Kingdom of Copper. 
and then Empire of Gold, which I think is my favourite one. But I have been holding off on continuing reading this series until I got the set. So I do hope to read Kingdom of Copper very soon. These are big books, but the pacing I thought for the first one was great. Like the ending was amazing. It absolutely blew my mind. So I have been really eager to continue and read Kingdom of Copper. So I'm thinking maybe November, December. It has to be soon. I need to know what happens. So yes, I have those two. And that was my haul and yeah hopefully i'm going to be reading some more of these books but first things first i'm going to go make myself a cup of tea and take some um pictures with all of these cute pumpkins i am living my best life this month How are we doing? I'm doing great because I have been reading Home Before Dark and guys, this is exactly what I wanted. Oh my God, it is hitting all the beats of a classic haunted house story and I'm loving it so much. So I'm on page 285. I have around just less than 100 pages or so to go of this and it is making me doubt myself and second guess everything as I expected. It's great. Is this paranormal stuff actually happening or is it something else? I'm not sure. I'm loving the chapters from the book, which is House of Horrors. I have kept forgetting the name before, but yes, the book that her father wrote was House of Horrors. And we did have, not necessarily a twist, but a reveal pretty early on, which I did expect, but I'm not mad at it because it opens up so much more into this mystery. And I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I was gonna say I'm thoroughly thrilled. I didn't think I'd get that right, but yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. <laughs> the main thing I want from these types of books, from thrillers and mysteries in general, is to be entertained. And oh my God, this is entertaining, but I would absolutely love it. Like the ones I love have to surprise me, have to shock me, have to thrill me. So hopefully the ending will do just that. So not too far off. I did say I would try and read it on Sunday, but it got late. And then yesterday was a busy work day and I should have been reading last night, but I wasn't. I was watching Emily in Paris on Netflix. So that's how my day was going. But I've also started, okay, I did do a bit of reading last night because I did start, I think I already mentioned that I'd start the audiobook for my lovely wife, which I have done. And this is so juicy as well. This feels like it's going to be really dark and twisted and messed up. And oh my God, I'm so down for this. I can't really talk about this one without spoiling it because the synopsis is very vague. So the synopsis basically says this is a story about a married couple, they have a very dark secret. So if you are somebody who wants to go into these types of books not knowing anything, I would suggest skipping to this time because I'm about to spoil what the dark secret is, but that's the best way I can talk about this book is to actually say it. And it is um, pretty much from the off. As soon as you start this book, you know what's going down. So. I'm assuming everybody has skipped ahead that wants to at this point. It's about a married couple that kills people. They kill people together, like they choose somebody, they go and do the deed together. But so far, we're just getting the perspective of the man in the relationship. I do not know his name, <laughs> but hey, I'm only a few chapters in, but he is mostly talking about his wife. His wife sounds like such an interest. She's got some secrets, she's shady, something weird is happening with her, I think. I think something to do with her past. We keep getting mentions of her sister. I don't know, so intrigued. <laughs> but really early on, so I don't have too much to say. The audiobook is fantastic though. I probably will read some physically as well though. But I'm hoping we might get um, the woman's perspective, the wife's perspective. Maybe in the second half it will like jump to her perspective or something, I'm not sure. But so far, this is great as well, but still pretty early. But then I also started the Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And this is so much fun already. I am on page 77, so chapter 19. And this is so quick. I read that really quickly, actually last night. I wanted to continue, but I had to go to bed. But 
yeah, Knives Out vibes. As we follow a teenage girl called Avery, I think she's around 16 or so, she lives with her half-sister, I think her mum passed away, and they share the same dad, but I don't really know too much about the dad. But out of the blue one day, Avery inherits billions of dollars. There's an eccentric billionaire who has left her pretty much everything. He does have four grandsons though that are all kind of late teens, early 20s, you know, characters, all a bit dashing, very well to do in Texas for the Texans. So I know there's gonna be games and things, haven't quite got to that yet, but I'm excited. <laughs> But she has gone to the house, it's this huge sprawling labyrinth of a place in Texas and the guy, the billionaire dude, he uh, seemed like he really was into puzzles and things so there's been some hints of that, some kind of secret tunnels and things within the house but it is a stipulation of the will that she has to live in this house for a year with his family members that are pissed. Like he has two daughters, four grandsons, and yeah, they're all pissed. Actually, a couple of the grandsons don't seem to care that much that they've been disinherited. Well, they've got some, they've had some money, but like he was a billionaire and yeah, I don't wanna give too much away. <laughs> but I'm hoping this book will take us through the whole year that she's there. I can't wait for this introduction of games. I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work yet. But total Knives Out vibes. I'm expecting some romances, probably with maybe one or two, maybe possibly three of these brothers. <laughs> They're all dashingly handsome and charming and funny, quite different from each other, but the younger one's my favorite called Xander. He seems like a laugh. I'm expecting some romances. Not too bothered about that, but I wanna get to the games, the puzzles. I wanna know why she inherited this money. She, this is another thing, she didn't know the guy and she sees a picture of him, she still doesn't know who he is. Now, there has been some things from the very off that I have had some theories on. Like, I'm hoping I'm wrong and it's not that obvious, but I'm loving this so much. I feel like I've just talked about this one for ages and I'm only 77 pages in, but this is fantastic. So, having the best time so far with my reading. But I also have another little haul for you, because of course I do. I have been spending all my disposable income on books and plants recently. It's a problem, but it's a problem I'm okay with right now because my copy of The Picture of Dorian Gray arrived, which I did say that I'd ordered in my TBR video, but guys, this is a Chilton Classic Edition. I didn't realize Gilded Edges, Gold Gilded, I will try and get some b-roll of this book in actual proper daylight, better lighting because it needs a moment, it needs a fashion montage or something. My god, so, so pretty. I'm sure you're seeing it now. But yeah, that arrived um, yesterday, I think, maybe the day before. And because it was so pretty, it was a moment of like, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I now want to collect all these editions. So I bought another one <laughs> and I bought Emma by Jane Austen. They all have these beautiful floral designs. I'm sure I'm getting some b-roll of this one as well because again, gilded edges, the reflection on these, oh my god. But yeah, Emma is I think the only Jane Austen, like popular Jane Austen novel that I haven't read and I do love the movie so it's about time I read it. I probably won't be reading it anytime soon um, but I have these beautiful editions now. So if you are a fan of collecting beautiful classics, I re definitely recommend checking out these Chilton ones. I think all of them have gilded edges, some silver though, and then some gold. This is gonna be a problem. I am probably gonna end up buying more of these editions because, oh my God. But yeah, I got that. I also got another plant because of course I did, but I got a little trailing, I think you call it chain of hearts plant. And it's just the cutest little thing. I love it so much. He's doing well so far. I've had him a day. I haven't got a name for him yet. He's apparently male. <laughs> Please feel free to provide name suggestions in the comments if you want to. Don't know where it's gonna live yet. I think I'm gonna put it in the bedroom when I finally, eventually do that. <laughs> and on the topic of plants, I got this really cute antique looking uh, sprayer. What a sprayer? I don't know why I'm uh, demonstrating this for you, but here we go. But I got this for my palm over there because I did have a like normal squirty bottle. I saw this and thought, let's be fancy. So now I have this. Yep, I don't know why I showed you that, but there we go. 
that's what I've been spending my money on recently. <laughs> but okay, it's now time to read. I'm actually alone in the flat. I mean, the cats are here, but what good are they gonna do if, you know, ghosts try and get me? This has actually been spooky. Have I even said that, that this has actually been scary in parts? It's giving me, just to throw you some horror books, this reminds me of The Conjuring, the amateur horror, obviously. Then like Insidious as well, certain scenes in this remind me of certain scenes from those movies. So if those are some of your favorite movies, you might like this. But again, I may be talking too soon. I haven't finished it yet. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm probably gonna scare myself alone in the flat, but it's fine. Matthew's actually out um, just getting some shopping. But Great British Bake Off is on now, so I'm not allowed to watch it without him, unfortunately. But when he gets back, I can recover from the spooks by watching some wholesome baking with my favourite person in the world, Noel Fielding. So yeah, <laughs> that's the plan. Gonna set some ambiance. I'm gonna stop rambling on, get to reading. Let's do this. Whoa. Huh. Well, shit. Huh. Well, that's a little bit underwhelming. Still have about 70 pages of this book to go, though, so we have hope. Hmm. What? Ooh. Mm, too obvious. There has to be more. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Okay. Ooh. Can't handle the truth. Huh. Yes, I I was hoped I was hoping. I was hoping. Ooh. Ha 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 ha. I like I like this. Ah, I was wondering about that. Wait. Okay. This was really good. Wow, okay. This was so much fun. I guess some people could have predicted the ending. I didn't. I predicted some things, but not like the major reveals. So much fun. This creeped me out. Had me engaged completely the whole time. I just love stories of creepy haunted houses so much, and this was everything I wanted. I definitely recommend. I think I'm going with, like, my first reaction is a high four star. It was really, really good, but it wasn't, it didn't, blow my mind but boy this was good i'm really excited to read lock every door now by riley sager riley sager could be a new favorite thriller author favorite mystery author it was certainly atmospheric i had a feeling about how this would end and i wasn't completely off but still satisfying nonetheless but yeah massey's now home so we are gonna have some dinner probably just a pizza and then we're gonna watch Break Great British Bake Off, which is a very different vibe. <laughs> Great start to Thriller Week. Okay, gonna go do the things. I'll update you when I have updates. <laughs> Obviously. Welcome to the Great British Bake Off. lighting is weird but we're just gonna roll with it but guys i finished the inheritance games and this was so much fun i'm actually surprised at how much i enjoyed this but i read the whole thing in the bath so i gave you no updates well, i didn't read the whole thing almost the whole thing in the bath i just really needed to know what happens i will say though not really games more of a scavenger hunt more puzzles based so the main mystery is why did Avery inherit all this money from this guy that apparently never knew her? She was just picked out of obscurity. And I think some parts of it were a little bit predictable, like the reveal, I guessed, pretty early on. But I really liked exploring this huge sprawling labyrinth of a mansion with all of its different wings and secret tunnels and that part was a lot of fun. Now what I didn't expect to like, but I ended up liking, was the relationships, the romances. I know, who even is she? This book felt like a palate cleanser to me, if that makes sense. And usually I'd get bored with the whole, oh, which one do I choose? Do I choose the bad boy or the good boy? But I really liked it. I, I know, I know, I'm shocked too. <laughs> kind of lived for the angst and the back and forth, the banter and also the drama. Very much family drama, dark secrets in the past. Again, touch underwhelming. <laughs> if you've read this, you know, you might know what I mean by that. But 
there's gonna be a sequel and you know I'm gonna read it because I think that it's gonna be more Xander based. The younger brother is called Xander. He's very much a puzzle or a riddle himself, I think. And he was a lot of fun. He's my favorite character. So I'm very excited that the sequel seems to be going in the direction with him playing a larger role. But I recommend this for fans of Truly Devious, Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, it's not that similar to Good Girl's, Girl, Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but still. And also, A Study in Charlotte. I think you would love this. It is a lot of fun. I couldn't put it down. It did read very YA, but it was a very good YA thriller in my humble opinion. Not that I've read a ton, but I am quite picky with thrillers. Uh, I say that. I loved <laughs> Home After Dark before dark. I keep doing that. And I'm giving this four stars, but like a low four star, if I'm being honest, just because it didn't thrill me that much. Some of the mysteries were a little bit obvious, but so much fun. If you just want something fly through and you like puzzles and mysteries, I think you would really like this. Also, if anybody else has read this, did the brothers in this remind you a little bit of the Raven Boys? I don't know. I got a Ronan and a Gansey vibe. Let me know. <laughs> I've also been listening to more of my lovely wife. I'm on chapter 39. I will probably switch to physical um, later and maybe finish it out physically. But this is fantastic as well. I can't tell you obviously too much. I'm probably going to say that a lot in this vlog. I apologize. I will say I was expecting some more shock value out of this. I haven't got there yet. That might be all left to the end. Um, but definitely still interested. want to know more about this wife. I don't know what her deal is. What's going on with her? Need to know. Also, there has been some um, parts that's kind of focused on family because they have kids and there's all like, oh, what's wrong with the kids? I've never really bothered about that, but still, still really enjoying that one so far. But now, I am. It's Friday, by the way. I should probably have said that. I just finished work. I did mean to give you updates on lunch breaks this week. My, my plan was to give you updates on my lunch break, but it's been a pretty busy week at work, so I just haven't, so I'm sorry. And Tiberius. Take these away from him because we're about to eat these. So I'm out of focus again. <laughs> sorry, the bad lighting probably means that I keep going out of focus, but it's getting darker earlier now. But anyway, I've just taken these off tips because look, toffee apple, toffee apples, guys. It's officially October when you get a toffee apple. Cannot wait to eat that. And I have some flapjack and some uh, chocolate buttons. It's gonna be a great time. I am about to go watch, well, we are about to go watch The Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix, which is kind of like, not necessarily a series continuation, but the same cast, same people as uh, The Haunting of Hill House, which was one of my favorite, is one of my favorite TV shows. I've been meaning to rewatch it, but Massey is a wuss. <laughs> He's really not into spooky and scary things, whereas I am. So usually I watch this stuff with my friend Connie, but we can't, we had plans to watch this together. But lockdown, well, stricter regulations in Scotland. That's the real scary thing here, isn't it? It's just the general world. So yeah, The Haunting of Blind Manor is gonna be a nice distraction from the actual horror. But <laughs> gonna go watch that now, I'm so excited. Um, so I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done tonight because we're probably gonna binge that and I'll give you thoughts on it, I guess, probably tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll see you then, I'm so excited. Wait, is that meant to be a British accent? It's now Sunday. I have things to catch you up on. First things first, I stayed up and watched the whole of The Haunting of Bly Manor on Friday night. I think I went to bed at like 4am or something. What I didn't expect was to be crying at 4am. It was so goddamn emotional and beautiful and I loved it. Oh my god, the relationship. Not to spoil anything for you but it was good. I will say though, not that spooky. Okay, yes, it was a bit spooky, but nothing like The Haunting of Hill House. I feel like The Haunting of Hill House was a lot more artistic and offbeat um, in the way it was shot and with the way that the jump scares were set up and everything. That was terrifying. I loved that show. This, this one, not as scary, definitely. There were only, I think, 
two jump scares that got me in the last two episodes. But I did really enjoy the story, it just wasn't that scary unfortunately and that's kind of what I wanted. So if The Haunting of Hill House is a 10 out of 10, I'd say Bly Manor is like a 7 out of 10. <laughs> and also I couldn't help but get distracted and get drawn out of it because of the dodgy British accents. They weren't that bad, like I'll give them credit. It was alright, I mean I was really impressed with the Scottish accent. I know I'm not Scottish, but I lived in Scotland for, what, seven years now? I thought that was pretty decent, but the one that was kind of northern wasn't really, was it? It was like a northern and southern English mix of an accent, which I know can happen. My accent's a bit like that because, well, not southern, but I have a Lincolnshire accent, but I am originally from Yorkshire. My family's all from Yorkshire, so occasionally you will hear the Yorkshire come out in my accent and I will start calling myself Cody rather than Cody, <laughs> as for an example. But yeah, I'm going off topic. The one that was supposed to sound northern, it just, with the context of the story, it didn't really work, did it? <laughs> so let me know your thoughts if you also watched the show. Also, I finished, I finished some books. Um, I didn't update you yesterday because I was having a bad mental health day. I was doing shite, probably because I stayed up till 4am the night before. I do it to myself, really, don't I? But I did finish My Lovely Wife. And it was alright. <laughs> it was entertaining, it just wasn't all that shocking. I wanted it to be more shocking. Um, I really liked the idea of it, the ending, I really enjoyed the last chapter. Although it did make me giggle a little bit because of setting. <laughs> but there were two, I'd say, major reveals in here and I guessed them both pretty early on. Um, which is fine, you know, if the clues are there that's fine. But I was expecting this to be more shocking and a bit darker than it actually turned out to be. So I would still recommend it. If you haven't read that many um, thrillers you probably would still really enjoy this one. Um, but I'm giving it three stars I think for this one. I did however start Harrow Lake by Cat Ellis and this is really creepy. I don't even know if this is a thriller. I think this actually might be a horror and also I think it's YA. Don't think this is, I thought this was an adult thriller, guys. So as I said, it's about a town called Harrow Lake where a very famous cult horror film was made called Nightjar and we follow the daughter of the director. So right at the beginning of this, her father is attacked, he's stabbed, so she has to go and spend some time with her grandmother who still lives in this place called Harrow Lake, which was a mining town, but a lot of, there was lots of landslides, um, chasms, lots of people died. It kind of gives me Silent Hill vibes like that. And this town seems to be still in the past there's a lot of tourism because of the movie Nightjar which was set in the 1920s so a lot of people still wear that garb they kind of lean into that but it's a very creepy town and her mother was from there her mother was the star of the film but her mother left years ago she doesn't really remember her mum so there's a whole mystery to do with that but I didn't know there's a monster in this there's the monster um what's his name Mr Jitters which is like this creepy puppet person on the front and he lives in these caves and he eats people that's kind of like the town legend and creepy things are happening I'm only around 100 pages in so far um but I like that our protagonist is a horror movie fan because there's been so many references Kirsty Logan on the back says that this is like Scream meets the Babadook which I would kind of agree with because of all the horror movie references and because there's a more creepy ass monster. So not too many thoughts just yet, but this has had some chilling scenes already. The town is weird, the townspeople are weird. Really enjoying this so far. But it's Sunday evening now actually. I had a bit of a shit start to the day actually. I was woke up really, really anxious because I had sleep paralysis. I think that the horrors and thrillers and everything I've been reading recently are starting to affect me. And now I'm not someone who gets spooked easily, but in my dreams apparently, that's happening. I had a, well, I don't know if it was sleep paralysis, but I may have, I just dreamt that I had sleep paralysis. But I dreamt that there was this like huge dog pinning me and I couldn't move and I couldn't speak. And I'm not scared of dogs, so I don't know where that comes from. I also had a dream last night about loads of snakes and I was trying to save cats and kittens from snakes. And I know that's because of one of the books I read this week because there are some scenes involving snakes. Also though, I like snakes. I've always wanted a pet snake, so it doesn't really make sense why I was scared, but I was, so I woke up a whit bit weird. <laughs> Managed to turn it around though, and I have filmed a book haul today because I've been book buying like it's going out of fashion recently, so I thought a book haul could be quite nice to do, so I filmed that today. And I also dolled myself up a little bit. I'm wearing an outfit that I wouldn't usually wear just to film and then not do anything, but I needed I needed to feel a little bit badass today. You ever have those days where you're like, I just need to feel a bit more confident 
today was that day. <laughs> so I might as well show you my outfit. So this is my outfit. It makes me feel very autumnal and these boots make me feel like I could take on the freaking world. So I, I just dressed up for no reason, but sometimes, man, sometimes I need to. <laughs> So very happy to say I have turned this day around and I had planned on finishing out Harrow Lake today and then beginning. Lock every door. I wanted to get all of these books read by the end of today but I don't think it's going to happen because I completely forgot that I have a live show tonight for Elderling Along. We're going to be talking about the Ship of Magic. So yeah, I don't think it's going to happen now. <laughs> few days my apologies it's actually now Wednesday evening I've just finished work it's getting darker outside earlier and I'm loving it but I do have some reading updates for you a couple of reading updates but first more hauls it seems like this vlog is mostly me just showing you things I hope that's okay but these are both bookish firstly I got this box you'll probably recognize this box I got a little parcel from Grace and Honey. I placed an order for the Believeathon candles and I'm so excited to smell the mint chocolate one. I'm hoping it smells like after eights or what did you call them? Matchsticks? Is that what they're called? Christmas chocolate. That's what I want it to be. <laughs> so, And that's the one that was actually on top. So I'm sure you'll probably know, but this is Becca's um, shop and she has launched a couple of Believeathon candles for the third round next month. So the first one is <laughs> Crime and Punishment. This is the mint, vanilla and dark chocolate one that I was saying I'm so excited to smell. So let's do it. Mm, because of the vanilla, it smells more like mint chocolate ice cream, but mint chocolate ice cream is one of my favourites. I want to eat this. That's bad, but I do. But yeah, it smells like when you open up the box of After Eights, it smells like Christmas to me. It's great. Also, glittery. There we go. Look at that shimmer. Gorgeous. That one honestly smells so tasty. And then the other one... Wait, there's three in here. Of course she has. Becca. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, but yes, this is the second Believathon one which is tw two, oh wow, can't speak, 221B Baker Street, which is honey, tobacco, and amber. Okay, so there's the labels for both of them. Let's smell this one. Oh, that's nice. I don't know what it smells like, but I like it. I guess it smells like honey, tobacco, and amber. <laughs> that's what it smells like. <laughs> oh, it's sweet and musky all at the same time. But yes, also more glitter. These are honestly so stunning. I cannot wait to light these. And the freebie that Becca put in here for me, I'm gonna have to message her and say thank you, is Basic Witch. Is Basic Witch. This is, this is one, I kept missing the restocks for these because I'm the worst, but this one smells like pumpkin, espresso, cinnamon, and brown sugar. And I am so excited. This is one of the autumnal ones from the autumnal range. Again, more glitter. But first, oh my god, it's like autumn in a candle. Mm, it's like a pumpkin spice latte. It's so sweet. Love it. I love sweet scents. Yes, more glitter. <laughs> so pretty. Oh my god. I love this one. Mm, I love them all. It's so good. I didn't show you the label for this. There we go. That's the label. So I have three new candles i'm not in focus there we go i got three new candles i'm excited thank you so much becca for this one she did not have to do that and i really appreciate it because i really wanted that and i kept missing it she's the best okay and then secondly also bookish i got a little envelope from brit at basically brit who is also of course a booktuber i'm sure you are probably subscribed to brit if not link in description i'll also link brit's shop as well as grace and honey of course but i did um actually order one of her bookmarks i feel like i'm the last person to do this <laughs> i feel like i've seen so many people show this bookmark in vlogs and yeah i really wanted it too and i wanted to support brit so i can't get into the envelope <laughs> oh so pretty is this a sticker oh yay she there's a sticker in here 
How cute is the moon with some fun? Oh, this is adorable. I don't know where I'm going to put I might put this on my um, book cart thingy. <laughs> and there's another sunflower sticker on the tissue paper. Cutest packaging ever. I don't want to ruin the sticker. <laughs> Aww. Britt's put a little note in here for me. She says, Cody, thank you so much from Britt. And there's some more little sunflower stickers on here. So cute. This is gorgeous. This is, this is so stunning. Okay, you've probably seen this already, but if not, how pretty is this? It's so foiled. Just how gorgeous is this bookmark? And then on the back it says happy reading. We have Brit socials there. So gorgeous. And I love my little stickers as well. Thank you so much, Brit. I'll of course I said link uh, Brit's shop down below. I will definitely be ordering more, <laughs> no doubt. But this is a new favourite bookmark for sure. So that's my little, uh, another haul for you. And reading updates wise, I finished Harrow Lake, guys, and I really enjoyed this. I'm giving this four stars. It was very creepy. It had the atmosphere that I wanted. I did check on Goodreads and it's a YA thriller slash horror. There's definitely horror elements. Um, things that reminded me of other films, such as It and The Babadook. I got like Slender Man vibes as well. There's lots of um, horror movie references in here as well. So if you are a horror movie fan, you'll probably catch those pretty easily. There were a couple of shocking reveals, which I didn't guess, which is always nice. Um, I will say our main character, she feels very much like an unre unreliable narrator, which I don't usually mind, but I know that can put some people off. And also, it is a little bit repetitive. I looked at some Goodreads reviews and I know a certain word pops up a lot in this, which kind of got on people's nerves. Um, the, yeah, the main character could have done with being fleshed out a little bit more, but I was just here for the spooky atmosphere, the creepiness, the weirdness of this town. I love a spooky town. And it had lots of horror tropes, which I liked. And also, it wasn't wrapped up completely, which I prefer. We did get some answers to some questions that we wanted, but not everything was explained and I really liked it. Not too spooky to me, but I feel like some people could get creeped out by this if they don't read a lot of um, this type of book. But yes, very, very fun. I gave this four stars. I don't know if I already said that, but yes, I would definitely recommend this. I want to read more from Kat Ellis now. I know that she's got some other books out that I will need to check out. If you have any recommendations, please do let me know. And then I did start on the final book for this vlog, which is Block Every Dot. There we go. I am only around 50 pages in, so I really need to get a wiggle on with this if I don't want this vlog to turn into a two-week vlog. So I'm not that far in, don't have too many thoughts, but I think I already mentioned it's about an apartment sitter. Um, the job is definitely too good to be true. She's getting paid a lot of money to sit in this amazing apartment, well, to live in this amazing apartment for, I think it was three months? It's a very famous building. It has a bit of a dodgy past, which we haven't really dove into yet, but it's dove in a word not a word. We haven't really dove into the history of it yet but she's got a friend who did some googling and she was like hun this seems too good to be true um, but it does house lots of rich well-to-do people. Some could be celebrities so it's very very private so there are strict rules. She can't have anyone over. She can't talk about what she's staying on social media. It's kind of getting paid under the table as well in cash. So yeah all very dodgy. All signs point to run. But she is very down on her luck. Just split up with a boyfriend that she was living with because he was cheating on her. And she recently lost her job as well. So she really could do with this. And she doesn't want to... What's the phrase? Look a gift horse in the mouth? Is that the phrase? Possibly not. But anyway, this has given me Rosemary's Baby vibes so far at the beginning. And also American Horror Story Hotel. Even though it's not a hotel, it's an apartment building. I feel like it could go in that way. Her friend has already been like, what if there's some kind of cult or something? So I'm hoping. But I was actually talking to my friend Bobby about this. Because I was saying I read Home, um, Home After Dark? Home Before Dark. I keep getting the title of that book wrong. But I was saying I enjoyed that one. And she said, oh, I read uh, Lock Every Door and I really hated the twist. So... Apparently it's polarizing. Let's see what I think of it. So I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm gonna get to reading and I will let you know my thoughts further in. Hey, it's me. I hated this book. <laughs> Guys, I didn't even give you updates whilst I was reading it because I was so bored. There was nothing for me to talk to you about really, apart from things are happening really slowly 
everything's obvious. Oh my god, this is taking me forever to read. So nothing really kicked off until the very end, so apologies, I'm giving you updates now. I also realised that when I talked to you about this, I kind of missed off a part of what's happening here. So at the very beginning, the first chapter, we meet our protagonist and it's present day and she is in a hospital having gotten into a car accident when fleeing the Bartholomew, which is the um, apartment building where she is going to get a job, where she will be uh, apartment sitting. That's how we first meet Jules in the hospital, and then she's like, oh, I don't want to go back to the Bartholomew, I'm just so happy I escaped. And then we have a countdown, so it's uh, six days that she lasts in this apartment. And every so often we'll get the present tense of her in the hospital, and then it'll flash back to five days, and then four days, and then three days, and etc, etc. Like I said, I was so bored, I guessed what was happening from the very first chapter which would have been fine if there were some twists and turns, some red herrings if I was second guessing myself at any point throughout this book. But every time we got a new reveal or we got a little bit more information, it just solidified that I was correct. And there wasn't even that much creepiness and I'm so disappointed because I loved Home After Dark so much. It's bloody Home Before Dark, isn't it? It is, oh my god. <laughs> and the thing is, I like the direction this took. I just think it could have been done so much better. I've seen it done so much better. I think I mentioned I talked to Bobby about this and she did tell me that the twist is polarizing. I don't know if it would be polarizing. I think it just might be a case of those who guessed it really early and those who maybe didn't guess it until early on, like till later on or just didn't guess it at all. I don't know if I'd recommend this to even people who haven't read a lot of thrillers and stuff because I just feel like this has been done so much better before for. I seem to prefer paranormal <laughs> thrillers, it seems like. That's what I'm learning about myself this week, these last two weeks. But I liked Final Girls. I really liked this one. Didn't like this one. So in the words of Meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. I will still read more Riley Sager. I just don't understand the hype with this. I don't know. I was just so bored, man. <laughs> It took me ages to get through and that's not what I want when it's a thriller. I want to be excited to find out more. I feel like we could have learned so much more about the history of these buildings and the residents of the buildings, but it didn't really go there. Also, I, I think I forgot as well that the main mystery is about what happened to a fellow apartment sitter. Our main character meets somebody else who's also apartment sitting, I think the floor below, and she leaves very abruptly and the main character thinks it's sus because it's sus the way that she left. That's the main mystery. Underwhelmed, so underwhelmed. And also there was a couple of places in this book where I just kept thinking to myself, why? Why are you doing this? There's a whole part where she goes to the library to look up stuff. And I'm like, you have Google, girl, what are you doing? And then when she's in the library, she Googles something. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and there was a couple other instances like that, which I can't really tell you about because spoilers, but oh God, yeah. This is the only book I think I've rated two stars this year. And that's saying something. The writing's fine. I just, I wanted to be excited. I wanted to be thrilled, entertained. Not necessarily, I don't even need to be that shocked. Just entertain me. That wasn't entertaining. Yeah, disappointing. Sorry for the rant about that one. I just had such high expectations after <laughs> reading this one. But that's this vlog. I finally did it. I finally read all five of them. Honestly, this took so long. I could have been done so much quicker if I'd have picked a different one. But anyway, to give you a wee overview of what my favourites were from this this vlog, um, definitely Home Before Dark is the standout. If you like paranormal, creepy books in books, amateur horror style, haunting of Hill House premises, you're gonna like Home Before Dark. I got it right that time. <laughs> and also the two YA ones were some of my favourites too, which I am surprised at because I haven't had the best experience with some other YA thrillers and mysteries and things, but these two were really, really good. Um, this one was very drama filled and uh, puzzles, which I like. And then this one actually really quite was quite creepy. If you like small town, lots of horror movie tropes, I would definitely recommend these two. But the ones that I expected to really enjoy from this vlog, which was these two, not shocking enough, not entertaining, really obvious. 
I'm just, I'm not over this, okay? But all in all, I had a mostly enjoyable time reading all of these and I definitely recommend three out of five of them. So do let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. Let me know as well if you're planning on picking any of these up now. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Yeah, it ended up being a two week vlog. It's fine. Everything's fine. I've read one book from the official TBR for this month, which is home before dark and we're halfway through the month. It's fine. Also, my loves, I can't finish out this vlog without thanking the people who gifted me these books. So thank you so much to Gabby for my lovely wife. Big thank you to Madison for Harrow Lake. And thank you, of course, to Teresa for spoiling me with these two Riley Sager books. And I hope you are having a fabulous October so far. Give me recommendations, please, for more thrillers, horrors, things that you think I will like, because I'm on a binge. It's all I wanna read. Probably gonna be continuing to read this kind of spooky shit into November as well, because I'm on a kick. Nightmares be damned. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I hope you're doing all kinds of fabulous. Uh, chat to me down below please like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video which i hope you did and i'll catch you in the next one my dudes bye y'all <laughs>